Good morning, friends. Welcome to my homeschool. If you're new here, I'm homeschooling my three-year-old and four-year-old due to COVID. Um, and I'm vlogging every single day. So if you just clicked on this video, make sure to give, go back because um, I'm gonna show you what I'm doing every single day. My lessons kind of build up on each other. So make sure to check one and two because every next day I address the skills we need to work on. From the day before I kind of adjusted, I wrote out my goals. For this time, the schools are gonna be closed now till April 15. So I am i don't know if I'm gonna continue vlogging for all the whole time, but my plan is to vlog through the entire time we're doing this. Today's vlog is also gonna be a little bit longer because I'm getting the materials from the Montessori school where my kids go and I'm getting lesson plans for them, which I will be sharing with you as well. Even though they're geared towards my kids, I feel like you will get a lot of good ideas from that as well. Personally, I use the blend of human curriculum because I like their workbooks and I use it for, for both my three-year-old and four-year-old. I also use Montessori and I use lots of hands-on materials like tactile materials and also play-based activities, occupational therapy related ones. So I'm gonna show you to now what we're gonna be working on today. Uh Today, I will be starting with these cards and this tray for card to write out the numbers just to get like the body memory in uh, because we did this workbook yesterday with numbers and we haven't practiced writing in a while, so it was a little bit tricky. So we will be working today on finishing up this page and then we're going to go into these numbers here where you have to uh, put them in. I'll uh, walk you through like human method a bit while we're doing that. This is something I just wanted to share with you. This is how you can uh, give your child auditory cues on how to write certain letters. Maybe so I'll just do a sit down segment on this. Uh, we will also be, sorry, my coffee cup. Can't live without coffee today. So I'm gonna do Amelia Bedelia for reading comprehension and ask questions. For my son, I'm doing um, human cutting books. I ran out of his tracing from human, so I just ordered it and I have lots of materials coming. So I'll film a video on that as well. But this is just a preschool book where he can trace his shapes and do lots of activities. He likes that. And I'm gonna be doing clocks uh, and numbers here. And, and I have uh, alphabet flashcards that I'm gonna do with both of my children. I am not a fan of those. I actually ordered a different ones because this has both uppercase and lowercase. I ordered just the lowercase because that's what I'm working on with my four-year-old. Her uppercase letters, she knows all of them. It's the lowercase we're working on right now. Today, I'm starting with the beadwork just because I want to get that body memory going. And Scarlett is tracing with her finger first on the number itself. And then uh, I'm gonna ask her to do it inside the box. I like to use that box because it is narrow and it gives me another point of telling her start at this side and go all the way to the other side. This morning, we are going to practice a little bit more with the full body movements. That's something that I picked up from one of my customers, Coastal Therapy, is sometimes you have to start with a full body movement to get their child going, um, especially, you know, if the numbers are going backwards. So we've done that a few times. And then number two and number three, everything kind of came together the way it should be. And again, like as I said, see how here she's touching every side. That's actually what I was going for um, with numbers. After number two and number three, things kind of get easy for us. Uh, she is pretty good with all of them. It's just like getting that start in motion going. So now it's time for me just to enjoy my coffee. I forgot to tell you, the mixture inside the tray is actually colored quinoa all i used is food coloring i put some quinoa then i dried it out and also beads you can use beads you can also use flour or sand pretty much a lot of materials with justin i'm working on his pincer grasp and he is now transitioning from Palmer soup in a grasp to a more defined one. Uh, he's still kind of alternating. So the more practice he gets, that's why coloring books are great for preschoolers and finding something that they love doing to develop that fine motor skill. Scarlett's 
Scarlett and I moved on to our Cumin workbook with numbers. It is numbers from 1 to 30. We're finishing up our pages on 1 through 10. And uh, I went in more depth in my previous video, but I will kind of mention it here if you're just joining me. So right now what she's doing, she has to color the dots and all of the dots are five at the top. So I'm actually using it from beginning edition. So we go through, oh, so there is five at the top. How many are at the bottom? So we're counting only the bottom ones. While we're doing that, Justin is doing the beads. Uh, he is amazing at imitating, mimicking pen control. So I just pretty much let him uh, do it on his own. And then here in this specific part of this workbook, you have to fill in what's missing. Human is repetition based, so you start with tracing, and then the next two tracks have, uh, for example, the first one has numbers one, three, five, and seven, and the next one is two, four, six, eight, and ten. So you fill those in. A lot of young children will be able to memorize how to count from 1 through 10, but an actual counting and understand one to one correspondence and understanding of the number of objects comes a little later. And this is what this activity is geared to, is understanding what 1 means, what 2 means, how 2 objects looks like, and you can go uh, as high as probably number 10. In, on this activity. I tend to use the materials that I know that my kids are into when Justin was learning the colors. I used cars for him because he was really into cars. In this case, I'm learning the, um, using the dinosaurs. So one of the things to do during this activity is to get your child to count with you and to touch every single object they're counting so they're able to uh, say out loud the numbers and memorize what that number looks like. It is close to 10 o'clock and we need to head out to pick up all the materials that I can't wait to show you. Uh, we still have quite a few things left, so I will be coming back to homeschooling a little later today. I have a We just got back from the picking up the materials from the school and here is Scarlett's package. This will be the pattern making. This is also pattern making. And this is from Montessori for everyone. I will actually try to link it for you if I find it online. Then there is a tracing numbers, one through six. The pink tower, I'm not sure how to use this one. I'm gonna have to email the teacher and see. This one is cool, I like this. This is a pretty considerable package. Baby Justin was looking for his uh, dinosaur and dropped the basket on himself. So here is some addition materials. I didn't even know Scarlett was doing addition. So I need to get some uh, materials for that. But here is a time to rhyme. You actually uh, could have seen this set in my Montessori classroom video. Uh, if not, I'll link it for you on the screen just to, so you can see how you do that activity. Scott was really excited about all her work from school, so that's her grabbing all of her books. And there is beginning sounds. It's pretty much matching activity, and then they get to cut it and color it, so it's multiple skills that they work on. And then this book is for, I believe it's consonants. Yeah, consonant workbook from primary. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get to the rest of my activities that I planned for today. Today, so they will be moving, push, be pushed to my next video. But I wanted to share with you uh, the auditory cues you can give your ch children for uh, strokes. So, for example, when you are prompting them and you want them to be able to write the letters, but you don't necessarily want them to copy the image. So this is a circle stroke for letters like P, B, C, D, E. So lots of them have it. Uh, tone line down for letters like L, D, B. So if you're prompting them, you can say, okay, you got a tone line down and then you have a circular stroke. Then short line down for letters like I, um, N. Then a uh, turnaround stroke for letters like U. Sleepy line is just the horizontal line that we use in many of our letters. And then leaning line, uphill and downhill. And then for S, the way we use it's magic C and turn around. So she can uh, repeat her C and then turn around. And for letters like F, J and others, it's candy cane. So you can see J is upside down candy cane when you want to give them those vocal cues. So in my tomorrow's video, I will be sharing with you rhyming work, also some phonetic work that you can do with your kids. 
For Justin, I'm gonna be doing a little bit more practical life just as I'll take from today. I definitely need to get him a little bit more busy when I'm doing a more intense work with Scarlett so I can give my, her my full attention. Uh, again, I'm doing, I'm doing daily vlogs, so follow along, click that subscribe button, and make sure to check out my whole playlist for homeschool because I created a separate playlist for this. I hope you're gonna follow along, click that subscribe button, notifications button, and I'll see you tomorrow.